You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. <laughs> Live from Ryan Field in Evanston, Maryland goes down to the Northwestern Wildcats 33 27. I'm Wayne, that's Mason. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show, and we'd like to thank Jordan for the hat, the Temple hat. It looked good there. Boy, Mason, that is a tough loss to take. A couple of key plays certainly turned this. What did you see out there? Yeah, uh, uninspired, unprepared, and unready to win team that, that had a shot there at the end, and just like the rest of everything today, dropped the ball. It did drop the ball off to our left, and this end zone was also the end zone. Maryland couldn't get it in that one yard they needed. <laughs> Those two plays plus uh, just the undisciplined, sort of uninspired play, but the needless 15-yard penalties haunt the Terps again. It just didn't make the plays. Statistically, the game's pretty close, but in watching the game, Maryland just didn't, just didn't bring it. Just were not ready to make the play when they needed to. I don't know if it's on the coaches, which I suspect it is, or on the players who don't do exactly what they're supposed to do and can't keep hitting people after the whistle. Man, you keep seeing the same thing, keep seeing the same movie. Um, Leah did bring the team down here at the end, almost had a chance to win it. I'm still waiting for that one time when that magic does happen. Uh, what The star of the game for me is probably McDonald at tailback. He looked really good. Yeah, I mean, sure. I don't really think there's any bright spots when you lose this game. There just isn't. This is, I said it the last game, it's a disaster of a program. They can't block anybody. They don't show up ready to play. They don't execute on the what seems to be the, like the simplest things. And look, you're seeing the regression of a team. And that, to me, points to a coach that told everybody on his team that they're going to compete for a championship this year. And when they got punched in the mouth the first time, they haven't been able to get back up. And that that's goes from everybody from strength and conditioning to the coaches to the guys that are actually playing the game. And it shows when they needed to stop Northwestern, what's on the field is a walk-on, two SDS transfers, and a, and push on Fuller who came from Florida State. So you talk about Loxley bringing his own guys in. They're not on the field when the game matters. We're going backwards. We're going backwards in a bad, bad way. And for anybody that says the Big Ten West is easier than the East, we don't win against Big Ten West teams. So... I mean, that just, this is the worst team in the conference, and you just got blitzed by them. I, I don't really know. There's not really anything to say. Yeah. It's time It's time to time to move on. This quarterback era is done. It's, it's, a lot of people would say if they weren't locked into this contract, this coaching era would be over. But really, it's, it's time to it's time to figure something else out, Ch change, a, make some needed changes uh, across the board. But we've run through assistant coaches, so there's only one guy. It's the guy at the top when you lose games like this. And that might be the best three minutes in Turf Talk history. Not really going to add much to that. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck, the speed of the truck, or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle, you're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. Since 1991, Viner Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the DC metro area and around the globe. Use Viner Forgates for your next IT project. Well, this is the second half of the post game show after the press conference. You heard Locks 
Ruben Hippolyte came in, Jay Sean Jones, all those videos are up on Turp Talk. Um, Mason, one of the things that I took away from this is enlisting the locks is that he really seems like he's at the end of his rope. This just, as you said, this isn't working. And to come back and say we have to reevaluate everything and to admit that we didn't play as hard as we could. He didn't use the word the standard this time. But that, that was not a good look. That was a really frustrated guy. And maybe we have hit that ceiling. I don't really know if it's a ceiling. Um, I, I just think at some point, anybody that does something so many times and for so many years and it's just not working out your way, uh, it reaches that point, you know, in, in anything. And I think uh, professionally, he's got to be looking in the mirror right now, thinking that he really had something here. And he did. I, that's when I was really upset before we had those last two drives to cut into it, saying that at, at some point, I'm beyond, are you going to be great? I'm beyond, are you really going to be good? Just win the game, get your sixth win, and get out of here. And, and that didn't happen. And I keep waiting for that. It's never, I guess at this point, just isn't going to happen for Leah. And I've said the whole, I've caught some flack for saying I really wanted to see a little more Billy Edwards, and I still have that feeling. But it's not just the one guy. Uh, so many missed tackles, they made Sullivan look like he could win the Heisman Trophy. And you said it, it's a, this isn't a very good Northwestern team. And they fired their coach and they were at the bottom of the conference and come in here and it seemed like every time you need to make a play, it just wasn't made. You go down and, and look, watch the game again that you're just gonna get frustrated again. So where do we go from here? The question is now, can you get to six wins? You're not probably gonna beat Penn State. You're not beating Michigan. I'm not sure what you're gonna do at Nebraska and it comes down that road game on Thanksgiving weekend at Rutgers as it has before. And Maryland's beaten Rutgers in that situation, but right now Rutgers looks a little bit better. Uh, and I'm not really that certain what it means to get one more win. Yeah, you get to play to get to a bowl game, but it's just not a good scene right now. It's not a good program at the moment. Yeah, I think it's, um, and earlier, you know, after the game and after last week's game, had a lot to say. Um, in some ways, if you want to take the bright side, you would say you're happy that you're here and that um, <laughs> we're saying that six wins isn't good enough given uh, where we were not, not too long ago with this football team and this football program. Um, oh, it's, it's not good enough, but that might be where you are. That's just it. Yeah, and, and in some ways, you might need to look at it and say that some of these guys that have been here, you would think a guy's going to get better in the sixth year in the same environment and the same place. Maybe that's just not really the case. Um, maybe, maybe, clearly there is something wrong here with player development. That's what I say. And yet, and yet, Maryland puts players in the pros, and and they're good. They go to the pros and they're good, and they can't win here. Um, there, there's other teams in other sports that have an all-star or two, and the team's just not very good. And I think the whole story here for Maryland is overall is just not very good. Um, but doesn't mean we're going to stop doing this. Doesn't mean we're going to stop following the team. But it does, you know, that, that eight-win season, nine-win season, of course, that, that's been flushed. It's gone by the wayside. And so we turn to Penn State, a home game at 3.30 on national television, and, and just hope that it goes better next week. Yeah, uh, one thing that you said that definitely sticks out is, you know, we don't have that. Clearly, we just don't have that guy that's going to elevate a program that, of where we're at. But, you know, I was looking at my phone while we were waiting for those players, and Kansas is uh, beating number six Oklahoma right now. If Kansas can do it, we can do it. We just need to find uh, our Jaden Daniels, or that's not the quarterback, that's the quarterback at LSU. Whatever the name of the quarterback is that's elevated that program, we got to find that guy, and we, we need it, and we can have it as a receiver. If Stephon Diggs was here, I'm sure we win this game. You know, it's, it's one of those things. We just – Apparently, do not have that guy that's going to make you win a game when the team doesn't play well. No, we don't. No, we don't have that. And uh, I'll leave it up to all the rest of the internet and Twitter to, to say about all the penalties and all the missed assignments and all of that stuff. We were here. We saw it. This is a wonderful place. Evanston, we have not been here before. Really nice town. Uh, really old stadium. And, and with that, we're going to bid you good afternoon.